welcome back to another tech that repair video in today's edition we'll be working on the ipad air 4th gen uh, this video will be a tablet disassembly in order to see uh, the steps needed to be taken in order to replace parts such as the screen battery charging port so we would be tearing down uh, this unit in order to see like how complex it is to like replace those parts first we're gonna need a phillips screw a heating mat uh, best to work with a plastic card and a screen disassembler together in order to remove the screen and you can always complement the work with some heat gun and isopropyl alcohol 99% proof to help loosen the adhesive so first thing you're gonna need is to set the temperature of the heat mat anywhere between 60 to 80 degrees and in the meantime you can apply the alcohol on the frame edge of the frame for this type of repair because um, iPads don't really are are not really assembled with a lot of screws they usually are parts glued in together different concept than phones so it don't really need a lot of tools that's the benefit of it first start with the screen disassembler and while you're doing this you want to make sure you don't go too deep because those screens sometimes um, they can be recycled so like if there is a good lcd it's always good to go with the habit of always keeping the lcd intact the function of the guitar pick is just to make sure like there's no reattachment after like the tablet goes cold perfect now we can just take the plastic card go deep the screen so make sure you go underneath the lcd panel so you're gonna see those are the magnets holding tension between frame so you want to be careful right here because there are real cables so that's why it's always good to use the plastic card so you can go underneath It does open like a book, similar to the iPad Pro design. However, the thing that you should be careful about the iPad Pro is that on this section, actually, there is the Face ID connector. However, for this unit, they use the Touch ID on the edge of the frame. So there's no Face ID for this iPad, keeping the name of iPad Air. We have yet to see an iPad Air that utilize the Face ID function. Then the iPad. Also, it is a good idea to have one of those stands to make sure you work comfortably on the iPad because the hardest challenge is to like work with one hand and keeping it handy like that. So those come very handy and they also work on the other side in case if the screen opens up vertically. First, we're going to start by taking out the screws holding the daughterboard connection and the LCD connection. I'm going to disconnect. the screen comes out so when it comes to screen you only need to replace the display assembly then we're gonna move on on how to like remove the motherboard the rear camera and the speakers along with the batteries so first thing you want to get the Phillips screws from the battery disconnect the connection of the rear camera and this is the connection of the Wi-Fi. So the front camera has a similar design compared to the previous predecessors. We're going to remove the screws of the charging port. Then disconnect connection on the board. And you're going to notice there's a lot of coaxial connection onto the board which are part of the loudspeaker system and there is also the connection here of the loudspeaker at the bottom bottom loudspeaker there is a magnet in between they're very strong so it's always good to apply a little bit of isopropyl alcohol so there is a very strong resistance beneath it's because of the magnet in the center of the bottom speaker so you're gonna have to apply a little bit of pressure to extract the loudspeaker this is the part you want to pay attention because as you can see there is a very strong adhesive and it sits in between a lot of magnets here you want to be gentle while extracting the bottom loudspeaker for the motherboard it's always good to put a lot of isopropyl alcohol because it's heavily glued onto the frame for the motherboard we want to make sure we took down all the connections make sure you disconnect the very tiny ones here those are like the connection for the touch id power button reader and the rear camera is actually slightly glued onto the frame with some tiny this yeah, it should come out and there you have it it's the rear camera same used as the ipad air 3 these are the coaxial for the antenna and there is also the connection of the loud top speaker so those are very tiny connection you want to be careful by being gentle 
that should come out. We can also work on the top speaker. The motherboard is a L shape, so there is also a connector here on top. And there it is. So once you see that all the connection have been taken out, the motherboard can be extracted. This is actually a flex cable that goes all the way to here. Then we're gonna remove these screws holding the top loudspeaker. So this area, actually there's a lot of resistance, a lot of glue. So first we're gonna take out the screws. There's also some hidden screws you wanna pay attention. in here yeah you have to be mindful about like all these screws and as a matter of fact i still do not know why they decided to put a top cover on top of the loudspeaker uh, because it doesn't seem to be like a rebound cable it just seemed like something related to the cooling system because there's only copper beneath that metal bracket so it's kind of like a little bit tricky to extract the top speaker because of this makes the repair process a bit harder for replacing top speaker so yeah you can see it's actually just copper beneath it so something related to the cooling system now we're gonna remove the last two hidden screws Phillips screw right here that is why so there is a plastic here so yeah very difficult to extract this part right here so it is actually connected to the coaxial antenna for the frame and here sits the top loudspeaker. Should lift up, there you have it. So this is what I was talking about earlier. This sometimes stays stuck on it but it's completely fine because like all you need to do is remove it by itself and it reattach automatically into this part. I do not know why they actually decided to put a magnet just below the loudspeaker. So it just snaps back on. Next, now we're gonna start removing the logic board. So we're gonna be using a plastic card. Always add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol in between the process to make the extraction much easier. Also be mindful of a tiny connection right here. Make sure you disconnect it. And as you go with the charging port connection, there's also a tiny connection that you want to take care of it. There we go. And there comes the motherboard of the iPad Air 4 Gen. And you can see here, like those are the pads where the charging port connection is soldered into the motherboard. And to remove the battery, the best way to go about it is to apply isopropyl alcohol and use a heat gun along with the heat mat because they have very strong adhesives. So you want to be putting a lot of isopropyl alcohol. Don't be shy. You want to make sure like it dissolves. Uh, the adhesive underneath completely So one thing we can notice is um, Compared to the cellular version and the Wi-Fi version um, There is less coaxial cable compared to the wi uh, uh, cellular version because coaxial cable like run all the way around the frame and there is a sim reader in this section here the battery is warmed up we can start working our way up using a plastic tool Apple use very strong adhesive for the battery. And 
there you have it. So all is left now is the frame with the Wi-Fi connection and the coaxial cable. Overall, I would give this um, repairability score an 8 out of 10. Uh, to replace the loudspeaker, it's where it seems to be more troublesome because of the numerous uh, doesn't seem to be a really good design by Apple uh, because the bottom speaker is much easier to action than the top speaker so there is that the battery also is very hard to remove so there's a lot of adhesive and to get to it you need to remove the motherboard as well uh, you can also like just simply lift it and change the battery without completely removing the motherboard but to replace the battery for these models it's gonna take a little bit of work so overall like it's not really friendly when it comes to repairability uh, a lot of parts uh, you know to get to them like you have to go through a lot of components and that's about it for this video thank you guys for watching if you see any parts or tools check out the links in the description also we do offer mailing repair and data recovery service check us out at tech.com thank you and see you guys next time